Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this! Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? Yeah! That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I almost forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya! What's up, fourth graders, and welcome to episode number two of the Math FSA Bootcamp series. At this time, I'm hoping that you have your worksheet because I want you to pause the video and solve number one and number two on your own. Make sure you're marking up your text and showing your journey and all of your thinking on paper, and then you're going to press play and come back and see me. Now, if you're saying, Miss McCarthy, I don't have this worksheet that you're talking about, go ahead and check out the description box below or somewhere around this video. There will be a link that you can click where you can get access to this episode, to this worksheet, and the other worksheets in this series too. Well, go ahead, now's the time, pause the video, rock it out, come back and see me when you're ready to go. All right, y'all, welcome back. Let's go ahead and go over number one and number two, let's see how you did. Make sure that as I'm marking, I'm, <laughs> as I'm marking up my text, Make sure that as I'm solving this out, if you see any strategies or anything that you would like to pick up and put on your paper too, please do that. This worksheet should not look blank with just an answer selected. You should be showing your thinking and I'm going to model how I'm showing my thinking. If you like the way I do it, then you can do it too. You can pause the video, you can copy down what I'm doing as we're going. So right away, I'm taking a look at the question, just scanning it, and I'm trying to notice what kind of question this would be on the FSA. I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five answer choices. And real quick, I'm also seeing a select all right there, just real quick by scanning the problem. I have a really good feeling as to what kind of question type this is going to be. What do you think? Yeah, it is. It's going to be a multi-select, meaning there should be more than one answer choice. Multi-select problem. Okay, now let's go ahead and read it. I see a lot of words, and whenever I see a lot of words in math, I always read it one time just to get the gist, just to get the basic understanding of what's happening. That way I can read it again and have a really good understanding of what's going on. So this says, Mrs. Phillips has $3 in her wallet. Mrs. McGinnis has seven times as much money in her wallet as Mrs. Phillips. Select all of the following that represent this situation. Okay, so I know I have somebody named Mrs. Phillips. She has some money in her wallet. And we also have somebody named Mrs. McGinnis who has some money in her wallet too. And we're just kind of comparing them. And by the way, let's pause for a second because I'd like to shout out two of my fabulous teacher friends at Windy Ridge, Mrs. Phillips and Mrs. McGinnis. I hope y'all are doing well. I hope you guys are watching this episode with your students. If so, hi students, miss you all so much. Just a quick shout out for them. Now let's go ahead and read it again. And this time I'm going to mark up my text. So we have Mrs. Phillips and she has $3 in her wallet. We also have Mrs. McGinnis, who has seven times as much money in her wallet as Mrs. Phillips. 
we are going to select all, which means to try all. We're going to work out all of the following that represent our situation. So before I take a look at what's going on here, I'm going to think about this problem as if there wasn't any work done here. So I know that I've got two people, right? I've got Mrs. Phillips. I'm going to say a P for Phillips. And I also have Mrs. McGinnis. Don't judge my drawings, y'all. Now, Miss Phillips has $3 in her wallet. So if this is her wallet, then she would have $3, right? Now, Miss McGinnis has seven times as much money. So if she has seven times, that means if we take seven of Miss Phillips' wallets, that's one, two, three, four, count with me, five, six, seven. Wow. Okay. She has seven times as much. So Miss Phillips has $3. That means that Miss McGinnis has $3. Plus $3 plus $3 plus $3 plus $3 plus $3 plus $3. plus $3. She has seven times as much as Mrs. Phillips. So let's figure out how much money Miss McGinnis has. All right. I'm going to use the, uh, I see that this would be seven times three. So I'm going to use the multiplication mashup to help me. I'm going to start with my sevens. So I'm going to sing the seven song in the mashup until I have three fingers up, which will tell me the product. Okay, seven song, here we go. It goes like seven, 14, 21, 21. If you're like Ms. McCarthy, what is that multiplication mashup that you're talking about? Somewhere around this video, I will make sure that I link the multiplication mashup for you. I could also have taken the three song and counted seven fingers and I would have gotten 21. Watch. Hit me with my threes pretty please. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21. There it is, 21. So we know, what does 21 mean? We know that's how much money that who has? Miss McGinnis and Miss Phillips has $3. Okay, now that we understand the word part of the problem, the situation that's going on, let's take a look at the answer choices. A says three times seven equals $21. So what could three represent? Yeah, three could represent the amount of money that Miss Phillips has, right? And then times seven represents the seven times as much money that Miss McGinnis has. So that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Let's go ahead and mark A. Miss Phillips had $3. Miss McGinnis had seven times as much, which equals $21. This is a multiplicative comparison problem. All right, next we have B, which I see boxes that say $7, $7, and $7. And I see that seven times as much, and I know that seven, 14, 21 dollars, that would make it $21, but does this really represent what's happening in the situation? Is there anybody who has $7? No, right? This is kind of confusing because it should have been $3 and $3 and $3 seven times. So this one is not a good way to represent the situation of this problem. Let's take a look at C. I see three plus three plus three plus three plus three plus three plus three. Plus three, plus three. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven threes, kind of like we did here. Three plus three plus three plus three plus three plus three plus three, plus three equals $18. Does it equal $18? No, it equals $21 if we add all that up. So what can we do with choice C? Yeah, let's eliminate it. Make sure you're eliminating it over to the side, not on top of the bubbles, because a computer will be scanning in your answers and determining whether it's correct or incorrect. If you make a mark inside of B or C, it's probably going to think that you meant to choose B or C, and we just spent our hard work and time and effort eliminating that one. Let's make sure our elimination goes over here. Let's take a look at D. D says P, which could stand for Phillips, and M, which could stand for McGinnis, does Miss Phillips have three dollars? Yeah. And does Miss McGinnis have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times as much as Miss Phillips? Yeah, in fact, it's like what we just did here. That's an excellent representation 
let's go ahead and choose that one. And finally, we have three plus seven equals 10. No, it shouldn't have been plus, it should have been times seven and not $10, but 21. So let's eliminate it over here. All right, so that's how you solve number one. Let's go ahead and take a look at number two. By the way, if you need to pause the video to go back and record anything on your paper or make any adjustments to your work, you definitely have the ability with these videos to pause it. So take that opportunity. You can also rewind it if you need to hear something again from me. That's the awesome thing about videos, pause and rewind. All right, number two, let's talk about the question type before we even jump on in. So I see a grid over here. I know my answer is gonna go in here and I know my bubble, I'm gonna bubble in the correct answer. This is called a gridded response. All right. Now we have, let's go ahead, we've got some words, so let's read it the first time to get the gist. It says, Mrs. Brewis has 40 gems. She has eight times more than Miss Smith. How many gems does Miss Smith have? All right, so we've got somebody named Mrs. Brewis and somebody named Mrs. Smith, and we're talking about what? gems and I'd like to go ahead and shout out Mrs. Brewis who is an amazing teacher at Emma Love Hardy Elementary. I actually did a virtual visit with her class. It was awesome. So hello Mrs. Brewis's fourth graders. I hope you guys are doing well. So let's go ahead and get to the problem. I just wanted to shout them out because I, I just love them. We have Mrs. Brewis okay, who has 40 gems. Mrs. Brewis's students, did you know that Miss Brewis has 40 gems? Has she told you that before? All right, so she, who is she? Mrs. Brewis has eight times more than somebody else, Miss Smith. Here's our question. How many gems does Miss Smith have? And I like to squiggle the question because it helps me identify what it is I'm trying to solve. It's my mission, right? All right, so let's start with what we know. We know that Mrs. Brewis has 40 gems. So I'm just gonna write down here 40 gems. We know that she has eight times more than Miss Smith. So if we don't really know how much Miss Smith has, that's what we're trying to figure out. How many gems does Miss Smith have? But we know that Miss Brewis has eight times more. That means that whatever Miss Smith has, I'm going to draw eight times as much here. So there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. We don't know. We just know that there's an equal amount in each that she has eight times more. So let me think about this. I know how many gems Miss Brewis has. She has 40. And I know that's eight times as much as Miss Smith. So if I took these 40 gems that she has and I distribute them into these eight boxes, then I can figure out how many Miss Smith has, right? Yeah, so let me go ahead and take these gems and distribute them into these eight boxes. I need to kind of be tiny about it. So one, two, count with me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Keep going until I get to 40. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. For five, I'm gonna make a slash through. That was 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. Okay, so now we have 40, and in each box, how many do we have? Five, right? Which means that Smith Smith also has one, two, three, four, five. So how many gems does Miss Smith have? She has five. We'll get to the gridded response in a second. Another way to represent that is that we knew the total, we knew the total that Mrs. Brewis had, and we also knew it was eight times as much as what Mrs. Smith had. So if we counted by eight until we got to 40, that would be using the multiplication mashup. Party rocking with the eights for sure. Eight, 16, 24, 32, 40, which would be five, right? So that shows that eight times five would be 40. And that is how many Miss Smith has. Now you can, in your gridded response, you can either write your five right here on the first one or over here all the way to the right in the last one. Whatever your teacher tells you to do is fine. 
I like to start from the left and go and make sure you bubble it in and right underneath it. All right, fourth graders, the skill that we practiced today was called multiplicative comparisons, and you might be needing some more practice with that. So let me go ahead and send you in the direction of more practice. The first step that I want you to take is to try out McCarthy Math 155. There's a link in the description box below or somewhere around this video. If you are already a member, just go to unit three, days 26 through 29. That's four videos that show you how to solve problems that are like this. If you are not yet a member, you can try this program out for seven days for free. Okay? Students are loving this series. It's jam packed. It's high energy. And my whole mission is to make math fun, make it click and make it stick for you. So please check it out. Teachers, you can also share these videos with your students. I show you how to do that in the tutorials tab. Um, okay, so check out that. If you need some more practice with more FSA style questions, there's another link to the How to Pass the Math FSA series. Now, I created this series a few years ago, back when the Math FSA was a computer-based test. Things have changed a little bit since then. It's not a computerized test anymore. It's actually a paper and pencil test. That's why some of the question types look a little bit different, but it's still excellent practice for you. So I've linked that in the description box below. Check that out. Finally, I encourage you to connect with me. I'm on Instagram at McCarthy Math Academy. I'm on Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy. And of course, I'm on YouTube at McCarthy Math Academy. If you found this video to be helpful in any way, shape or form, and you would like for me to keep on creating more math videos to help math make sense, please do me a favor and pop that like button right now. You could even take it a step further and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. That way you're the first to know when I drop a new video. And finally, before I go, I just want you to know that you were born for a purpose. That's right, you students, you are the generation of students that we have been waiting for. So make sure that every day you're trying to find your light and shine it bright. Watch out world, because we've got a whole new generation of world changers that are about to step it up and make this world a better place. I just know it. Remember that when you have the choice, which you always have the choice, to choose kindness. And I will see you all in the next episode.